Hi everyone, I have a circuit here that I have some interesting effects and I would like to share it uh, with everyone that would be interested. First of all, I'm going to start from where the source of the power is coming from. I have a uh, 12 volt marine battery here going through the inverter and the signal generator is the main feed for my circuit and it's plugged in to the inverter here. All right, so uh, there's my signal generator, and it, that's the only thing that's feeding this circuit. All right, so just to make sure that it's well understood, I'm not having a possible coupling with the AC grid here. Uh, I'm completely isolated this way here, for coming from the battery. So what the circuit is capable of doing is charging this two microfarad capacitor. I'm sorry if it's kind of large, but that's all I have for high voltage. And um, it's charging it to 500 volts, which is this meter here. And once it's charged at 500 volts, the circuit idles at 28 milliamps. All right. But when I short the, the capacitor here to empty it, there's the voltage completely dropped there Oops. and look interestingly the draw once the capacitor is shorted drops so right now at maximum load it's drawing only 3.42 milliamps so as soon as I release the connector look what happens the capacitor charges fairly quickly and the amp draws go up as it reaches its maximum uh, charge voltage. So there's one interesting uh, effect there that I find that kind of interesting. So what I'll do right now is I'm going to unplug the uh, inverter, uh, the turn off the inverter and unplug the signal generator and as you see there's no power going in there and the voltage on the capacitor is just starting to drop and I'll plug it back in the grid. I just did this just to make sure that everybody understands there is no coupling with the uh, power grid in this circuit. That already there is eliminated. So we're back to 500 volts here um, in our capacitor and the same amp draw and the signal generator is feeding the circuit. It's going through this amp meter here and I know this amp meter is very accurate. It's on a milliamp scale at this time and um, there's the feed coming into the circuit here and I've got this probe here uh, which is my uh, USB oscilloscope that's hooked up to my laptop and that's what's going in. It's uh, a square wave and it's 28.41 kHz and 25 volts peak to peak, 26 volts nearly, and 9.5 volts uh, RMS. The next uh, set here is the second probe, which is just standing here. It's not connected. Uh, I can put that on just temporarily here because the voltage is kind of high, and you could see the secondary coming out, and it's there you go. It's it's in. I'll unplug it, plug it back, and it's pretty close to a, a nice sine wave. So here's the circuit. So we've got the signal generator, the feed coming into the circuit. We've got a small, very small, little transformer, which is a ferret core little transformer that I pulled out of a PC board on a CRT monitor and there's the information the primary that I'm using or that I'm inputting is 3.4 millihenries and the secondary is 153 millihenries and we have a capacitor here on the ground side of the uh, signal generator and uh, the capacitor is uh, 5.86 nanofarad or 0.00586 microfarad and the 
uh, way it's, it's wired is not a standard way on the secondary side. I'm just using one side with two diodes, something similar to uh, Dr. Stifler's uh, work, and um, uh, getting an interesting effect. And also I'm, uh, I'm adding to the circuit a ground, which is grounded to the copper pipes of the home. And there's my charge cap there. So that's the circuit. Uh, very simple, nothing complicated. And uh, there's my two diodes there. So the two diodes are together. And um, this is the connection to the uh, ground of the plumbing, uh, the copper tubes. And those two leads are going to fill uh, my capacitor. So one of the interesting uh, effects here is if I put this uh, neon uh, bulb here on one side, one leg only on there, I can get this bulb to light. There's the bulb lit. All right. So only one lead is touching this and the bulb is lighting. Now if I hold one lead and I touch the other one. Look how the intensity is. Extremely high intensity. Now I find that interesting. The, uh, and as well, if I touch one lead here, again, and touch one lead on the ferrite, I'm doing this camera and thing by hand here, so bear with me. Uh, again, the light gets pretty intense if I touch the core material and one lead there as well. So that's, that's kind of uh, an interesting effect. The, um, the other thing is the electrical power. Now if I short this capacitor again, uh, what I'll do is I'll unplug the uh, the clips here, and I'll short that capacitor. So the capacitor is empty now. I can take these two clips that are capable of charging that two microfarad capacitor in very short time, right? But still the power is hooked up. There's the two leads that are charging the capacitor. If I touch those two leads together, you see my, there's my form, my waveform. So they're shorted, and there's the amp draw, all right? So there's no spark. I can touch these two wires. <laughs> I feel absolutely no electrical uh, shock whatsoever, nothing. I'm feeling no electrical shock. shock. But yet, when I connect it to this capacitor, I'm capable of filling it up very fast. Uh, and I've, I can fill up a, I have a 60 microfarad capable of filling that up really fast as well. Um, okay, this was just an edit point here. I had just backed up the camera. And uh, what I wanted to show you is, I uh, forgot about this, is the ground uh, wire that I'm adding to the circuit. And right now, this is the circuit operating without that ground. And look at the voltage that could be charged at the capacitor, only 363 and more milliamps, 31. Let me just connect that ground there and look at what happens to the meters. Ground is connected, voltage is shooting up, and the amp draw is dropping as well. <laughs> Interesting. So there you go, we're back to 500 volts and 28 milliamps. And I'll pull the ground off again and show you. There you go, dropping down back and amps are higher. Ground back on, amps going up. And I can take a core reading and there you go, 92 degrees is the highest temperature that I've got on the core. So anyways, I find this kind of interesting, all this stuff. Thanks for watching.